I wanted to show you how I re-engineered the trunk release switch for my Mazda MX-5 Miata. It's a 2012 and this appears right above the license plate so that if you have a key fob uh, with the remote you can uh, unlock the trunk by hand. My switch wasn't working so I took it apart, uh, popped it out. Uh, mine is, was missing a white plastic piece that pushes down on this button but what I did is I took this piece out, I'm going to show you in a minute, to clean the contacts first. So here are the contacts that you need to clean on the inside of the switch but also on the button itself and this just pops right out. So now that I've got the contacts cleaned, uh, I scraped off all the uh, rubber which was deteriorating on this inner gasket and I'm, I made something so that I can push down on the button from up above to make up for that piece. I wanted to be able to push down on this button evenly so I had to devise something that would do that. So I took a paint stick, cut it up, made a couple notches for these little slots that are on either side here. I don't know if you can see them and I uh, glued them together because I wanted it to stick up above, but I also didn't want it to wobble within. So um, I put this, I cut up one of those uh, Mr. Clean uh, eraser sponges, which didn't have a lot of body to it. And um, uh, just put it in there to, uh, to give it a little more support without too much resistance. Then I put uh, this, in um, you can see it sticks above and uh, just put a piece of glued a piece of felt to get some extra depth to it but you can hear you know that that button is now making contact uh, with the uh, uh, contact points inside Next, I wanted to seal it up, and I also had to uh, come up with something that would remain flexible and not too stiff so that you could compress this, uh, this button down uh, from the underside of the trunk lid. So I cut this piece of, this is that self-sealing electrical tape. It's uh, not your typical plastic electrical tape. It's very flexible, like a very thin neoprene. So that is going to get glued on over that, and that'll seal the button. And then I cut a, uh, a piece of very thin neoprene. I actually stole it from the, the, uh, one of the drawers of my toolbox. And uh, that, once this is glued on and sealed, this is going to go on over it. And then I'll be able to have that button to press down and uh, reinstall it. It should work. So I just sprayed both sides of the uh, of this. I put something to block uh, the uh, the actual switch area while I sprayed contact cement on both. I want to make sure that it seals really well, so I'm going to put another strip on this side so that when you press it down, there's not a gap there that exposes it to moisture. And there you have it. So this is probably overkill, but I just filled the gaps around the edges of this membrane with some uh, Permatex gasket sealer, which remains flexible. A couple of light coats of Flex Seal to seal the entire switch from the elements. No moisture should be able to get in now. So here's the finished product. It's not quite as pretty as I would have liked to have been minus the flex seal application that I put on it, but that'll give it a good uh, weatherproofing seal. And as you can see, it it works quite well. I tested it with an ohm meter, and the contacts work. And I am now going to install it in the car. This is what it looks like installed, and as you can see. Voila, it works.